Hi, my name is Isla. I am a registered dietitian and the owner of The Millennial Nutritionist. We are a health-focused weight loss brand. We have a podcast, YouTube video, um, but our most interesting thing that we have is a one-on-one -on -one coaching program. So we are a team of registered dietitians that coach people or counsel people through losing weight the healthy way with focusing on long-term habits, sustainable, slow, weight loss while focusing most on losing fat mass, not losing that muscle mass that helps keep our metabolism really high. You can go check out all of our services over on themillennialnutritionist.com. We also have a membership. We have just lots of free things on there as well that you can kind of look through. Um, so yeah, make sure to just go check that out. But today I did a poll on Instagram and to ask what video you'd be interested in watching next. And the winner was the top five things you are wasting your money on wellness wise or even like weight loss wise. So I'm going to tell you five things that I see clients waste their money on before they start working with me. So it is the value of me being a registered dietitian. I work with clients day in and day out. So I see how things really impact people. So I bring a lot of really valuable information to these videos. They are research based, but they're also just anecdotal based, which I think is the best of both worlds because we can have all the research in the world, but if it does, doesn't really help people, then there's really not a lot of point to it. So I can see how these things actually play out in the real wor world with clients over and over and over again. Number one coming in the top is greens powders. <laughs> so I was looking at one specific greens powder and they are about 80, it was about $80 a month. <sighs> greens powder, if you wanna look at it as a way to get in a bite of a multivitamin every day, I think that is fine because that's, I think, where the health benefits are gonna stop. However, at $80 a month, you can have a lot of other great multivitamins. I just use like the most basic, like nature made vitamin um, that's a lot cheaper and gets me a lot more uses than just per month. So I would recommend to use your money on a multivitamin that's a lot cheaper over there. But if you wanna get into the nitty gritty of why I don't think you should be using your money on greens powders, the first big thing is I just don't want you to be wasting your money on something thinking it's replacing or doing anything better that produce already can. Produce is already pretty expensive right now. Groceries in general are pretty expensive right now. So just use the money you have to eat the fresh produce or even the canned or the frozen produce in the store and it's gonna give you some more benefit, many more benefits than a powdered version. A powdered version isn't gonna keep you full. It isn't gonna allow you to celebrate with friends and family. It isn't gonna give you all of the vitamins and minerals that you need to be able to have good skin health, to have good gut health, stuff like that. Now, a lot of these greens powders also argue that they have all of these extra things that are actually already in fruits and vegetables for a much less lower price. Uh, but one of the big ones they say are phytochemicals. And just so you know what that is, phytochemicals are things like carotene and things like anthocyanins, which are in blue and green fruits and vegetables and carotenoids are in orange vegetables. The thing with these phytochemicals is there's no recommended amount that we should or shouldn't be taken because they are not really life or death vitamins and minerals. There are some vitamins and minerals that you, if you don't take enough, like you will end up in the hospital, but phytochemicals, actually let me correct myself, aren't even vitamins and minerals. They are just phytochemicals and we don't really know what extent they do or do not help with these certain things. They're, I feel like, kind of at the bottom of the totem pole as far as like nutrition research goes. We know that they're related to like things like increasing vision with um, carotenoids and potentially decreasing cancer risk. But with the amount of research that we have for other things that help boost vision and that help protect against cancer, like not excessively drinking and not excessively smoking, that's where a lot of the effort has been made in research. So it's hard for me to even say, hey, you can replace this supplement amount of phytochemicals with this certain fruit or vegetable because their across the board just isn't a recommended amount because we don't need to be focusing on that anyway. So don't think that you're not getting these things if you're not already eat. If you are already eating fruits and vegetables, you are probably fine. Okay, number two are probiotic pills. I actually just <laughs> filmed a podcast today with a gastroenterologist. Um, so make sure to go check that out. Eventually it'll come out probably in like a month behind this video. Um, but I got her two cents on it as well and we both kind of had the same conclusion that, again, the research just isn't really there for the need of probiotics. If you are a healthy person and you don't have a lot of 
problems like diagnosed problems like irritable bowel syndrome or you have diagnosed SIBO or you have diagnosed like Giardia, you know, something that's like really intense where you like just are really in pain or really struggling to live your life because of these GI symptoms. Like we don't need to be taking these things preventatively because there's just really no evidence that it does anything. And with $50 a month, you could be doing a lot more with getting probiotics in a natural state with fruits and vegetables like yogurt and sauerkraut and kimchi. And like I said, there are so many other benefits to eating these foods. So something like kimchi or sauerkraut is also gonna have a lot of volume and a lot of fiber in there. So it's not only gonna be a probiotic, but it's also gonna be a prebiotic to feed your gut. And yes, some supplements say they are a prebiotic and a probiotic combination all in once, but that's why we have food on this earth. We have, what else are you gonna eat at the dinner table? Unless you are gonna like double up, great but it's not going to overcompensate for a poor diet if you're taking these supplements. Some of the claims that were on this specific probiotic supplement that I found was first that it helps produce short chain fatty acids, which yes, all fiber helps with this or fiber in general helps with this. The other thing is it says it helps improve heart health by kind of getting rid of cholesterol in your body, which yes, fiber also does this. Fiber from food does this. You don't have to pay an extra amount for this. The other thing with probiotics when it comes down to it is that there is no recommended amount there again. So we don't need to be spending a lot of money when there's really no research recommended amount what you should be taking. I found one study that just recommended to just take as much as you, you know, kind of want or can in the form of like yogurt, kombucha, sauerkraut, kimchi, fermented beans like tempeh, things like that. Because there are, there probably is some benefit, but then again, like if you really don't have any huge GI problems, like we just shouldn't honestly be focusing all of that effort on that, but it can be healthy. So go ahead and try, but there's no like recommended amounts. There's no way to even know if you're not taking enough that you need to supplement on anyway. So basically it's kind of a waste of money to be spending your money on these probiotic pills because we don't even know what the outcome is. We don't know if it even improves health. If it makes you feel better day to day, sure, but don't be feeling like you are needing to spend all this money if you really don't want to. I would recommend putting that $50 and spending it on other sources of pro and prebiotics, like fruits and vegetables, beans, whole grains, yogurt, kefir, stuff like that. Number three are meal plans or meal kits that send you what you should be eating from like when you wake up to when you go to bed. I'm talking about these really restrictive kind of like diet plans that send you tons of supplements, send you like meal replacement packets, not something like HelloFresh. I think HelloFresh is honestly a really good way to spend your money, but where I see some people mess up is when they do these very, very restrictive, I don't even know what to call them. I guess I would call them like a meal delivery plan kit type of thing. I found this one that I've had previous clients on before. They worked with me and it was $400 a month. And then this did not even cover what you actually needed extra. So they sent you a lot of things that you should be eating throughout the day. They recommended a lot of small meals, but then they also said you needed to make extra food. So at $100 a week for one person, and then you also have to go to the grocery store and still make these foods, I feel like it's just so much money. I mean, you're basically just paying somebody to starve you because what this plan said that it did was, it was around like a thousand calories per day, which is such a low amount. If you're gonna do that, at least don't spend $100 a week. You can literally do that on your own for free, so don't waste your money there, but I wouldn't recommend you do it anyway. And then what's gonna happen is you're paying all this money to essentially kind of starve yourself, and of course you're gonna lose a whole lot of weight because it's such a low amount of calories, and what's gonna happen is because you're eating a low amount of calories and losing weight at a very, very fast rate, you're gonna lose a lot of muscle mass, you're potentially gonna like really worsen your relationship with food, and then you're gonna to come to somebody who is gonna really help you with weight loss and you're just gonna end up being so confused and feel so defeated that you don't know what to eat and likely just give up and eat anything that you can kind of find. I see this happen all the time. When you don't eat enough for weight loss, what ends up happening for a lot of people is they under eat at some meals and then they end up binging or overeating just because they're hungry. It makes you feel like you're gonna have these cravings all the time because your body wants you to eat. Of course it's gonna ramp up cravings if it thinks it's gonna make you eat something if it makes you crave something. Don't under eat for weight loss. Don't pay somebody to tell you to under eat for weight loss. It's a big waste of your money. Instead, spend this $400 on a gym membership if you wanna be fancy, on some fun clothes that you can wear to the gym for $400 or even just don't even buy it and just go to the grocery store and buy normal foods because I don't think there's a replacement for this. I'm just recommending you not do it. Number four is paying 
for nutrition advice from an unqualified person. Now there are tons of weight loss programs out there. There are tons of gut health coaches. There are tons of integrative nutritionists and stuff like that. Please be very careful and picky about who you trust to work with on your health issues. Nutrition is a clinical practice, especially if you have some sort of pre-existing condition, especially if you're pregnant, especially if you've just had a surgery, you shouldn't be out there trying to under eat and over exercise because you're never gonna heal. These things are very important and can really impact you. If you over supplement on the wrong thing, your kidneys will be damaged. Like it's not just something willy nilly to go around getting advice from people that don't know what they're talking about. I found one program that is very popular all over the US that doesn't focus on hiring registered dietitians. The cost isn't too high. It's about 275 for the initial session and then about, about like $80 for follow-up sessions. However, if you do this program, what they were talking about is you should lose like something crazy like 20, 30 pounds in the first month. That is insane. I mean, that is like definition malnutrition and you're gonna lose a lot of muscle mass just like I was talking about with the other thing you shouldn't spend your money on. You're also gonna, again, really get confused about nutrition and unnecessarily spend money. And the hardest thing with clients that I have that do these programs that are developed by non dietitians is they start to cry when they work with me because I have to tell them you paid somebody else to wreck your metabolism. And I know you paid to work with me, but now we've got to work on increasing your metabolism so you can lose weight eating a healthy amount of calories. Because I am not going to have you losing weight eating only 800 calories. It's so unsafe. You're not going to get enough vitamins and minerals. You're not going to get enough fiber. And then you're probably going to plateau again and you can't go anywhere from there. You need to work with somebody who is preferably a registered dietitian or at least has a really, really good background and healthy weight loss for people that know what different clinical states are so they can make sure they're not gonna overall decrease your health. I was working with a client, I started with a client yesterday and she worked with a lot of other people on her weight loss journey that weren't dietitians. And she said, even within the first session, I explained to her that we wanna be looking at things over a weekly average, right? Cause that's the way that calories work. You take a deficit that you wanna reach. We know that we need to reach this like eventual number of this like 3,500 calorie deficit, but we can't do that in one day. So we have to spread it out throughout the whole week. And that's how I get the deficit I recommend. So it doesn't matter if you are all over the place, as long as by the end of the week, it all averages out to the deficit range per day that I gave her. She was like, you're the only person that's ever given me permission to overeat a couple days a week. And then actually explain to me why it's okay. Every other person has been like, you've got to meet your, your deficit rate that I gave you every day, or you're never going to lose weight. And I looked at her and I was like, that person just like did not know what they were talking about. Because first of all, that's not even true when we think about like how a deficit works. Second of all, we should only be thinking about calories anyway. We should be thinking about exercise. We should be thinking about fruits and vegetables. We should be thinking about macros. And just like I tell my clients, hey, if you went over on your deficit, first of all, it's fine because of the weekly average. But second of all, hopefully you'll be doing these other habits that are also going to help you if you didn't meet your deficit that day to still be able to lose weight. All right, the fifth thing that you are losing weight with, and this is gonna be very, very controversial, is semaglutide or Ozempic, Wagovi, Manjaro, if you are not also working with a registered dietitian. So we cover this topic a ton on our podcast because we always have a little news time where we talk about the latest news, and recently it's all about Ozempic, 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 Ozempic. Now, the idea of these weight loss medications is really not new. We've always had with appetite suppressants, even if we kind of think about gastric bypass, that's basically what it's doing is it's just decreasing the amount that you can eat at one time. However, if you never change your habits, you will never have long-term weight loss. Even for people who have gastric bypass, they gain all of their weight back if they don't just in, if they don't improve their daily habits. So if you are taking this medication out of pocket, it can be around $1,300 per month from what I found online, if you're not able to use your health insurance for it, if you don't have diabetes. And what you're doing again is you're just paying somebody else to basically starve you. And if you don't stay on the medication and then you go back to eating what you were eating before, you're gonna gain the weight back, if not more, because you have restricted so much. This medication has gotten so much praise from the medical community, which I would love to have like an actual conversation with somebody about this. Because whenever I get clients who are on it, they have a very hard time eating enough calories. And although it's exciting in the beginning that they're able to lose weight, in the back of my mind, I'm always like, we have got to get you to eat more. 
because number one, you're probably gonna lose a ton of muscle mass, which isn't safe. It can increase risk of fall when you're older. It can also just make life not as fun. I mean, I just went snowboarding this past weekend. If I didn't have a muscle mass, I would never be able to do that. You can't go on a hike with friends. You're not gonna be able to hang out with your kids. You're not gonna be able to go up the stairs with muscle. We don't wanna be doing that. But also you're just not gonna meet your fiber goals. You're not gonna meet your vitamin and mineral goals. And then you're gonna end up having to supplement. And it's just not a great way to think about nutrition. However, if you wanna be on this medication because you feel like you just need a leg up, I get it. Weight loss can be very overwhelming in the beginning, especially if you have a lot to go. And so I think it can help give that push in the beginning and that motivation because I know to get that wheel turning, sometimes you need something to help you to just be like, okay, this is happening. I don't wanna lose that. I'm very motivated. I feel good. Like what else should I do to be healthy? And that's when I say it's not a waste of money if you are working with a registered dietitian who can help you. All the coaches on my team are aware of how we can help clients specifically on these medications to eat more when you don't have an appetite, to like make sure that you're eating enough fat because you can eat a small amount of food that's high in fat and that can give you more calories to make sure they don't have this like rebound weight whenever you get off the medication if you want to get off of it. And then remember that if you're just paying $1,300 to only be able to eat a thousand calories, you could just basically do that on your own. Again, I'm not recommending that, but I'm just trying to point out how much money that is if you're just under eating anyway. You don't need to be wasting money on that. If it does help with insulin resistance, great. But again, I completely understand if you need a leg up, if you need to get started with things, great. But work with a registered dietitian to also make sure that you are improving your health habits along the way, like make eating fruits and vegetables, strength training, walking, things like that. Because all those things are really what makes us healthy. Losing weight in and on its own will help with some things, but it doesn't help with the majority of the reason that we wanna lose weight, like decreasing cholesterol, like making sure that you are decreasing cancer risk because you're eating more phytochemicals from fruits and vegetables and things like that. A lot of people who are on this say it's because they just, they need it because they feel so hungry all the time. And if you are feeling hungry all the time, if you are feeling like you're having cravings, one thing, one free thing that you can kind of do instead of taking the medication is ask yourself, are you eating enough at a meal time? Whenever I have clients who say they have cravings, they find that most of the time it's solved if they eat more at meals. And I know that sounds very really weird and counterintuitive. It doesn't mean that like you should add a candy bar to every meal. What it means is like, ask yourself, are you only having like 300 calories at your meal time? Are you only having coffee at breakfast? Of course you're gonna have cravings because you're just hungry. So make sure you eat carbs at breakfast, make sure you're eating protein, making sure you're eating produce. And I would say for like 95% of my clients who say they have cravings, that's what helps stops it. I hear it every single week. They're like, I didn't have cravings this week because I'm just eating more food. So I'm really just not hungry anymore. And I'm the same way. If I skip a meal, of course, all I want for the next meal is going to be chocolate brownies. But I say, okay, I love, like you're really just hungry. Let's sit down and eat a meal. And if we still want a chocolate brownie after, we can have one. Um, and it normally helps. So try that first you know if you feel like you are really hungry all the time and that's why you want to go on the medication go for it but again just really try to find a dietitian you can work with to make sure you do this medication safely so you don't just end up really messing up all of your metabolism through severe under eating well i hope you enjoy those five top things that i think that you are wasting money on if you're trying to improve your health and lose weight for more videos, make sure to subscribe. We put out a video every Friday and Wednesday. And I also want to plug our Instagram account, the.millennial.nutritionist. We do so much content over there and it's kind of like the lifeline to figure out where to go next in this like millennial nutritionist world with our membership, with our free recipes we send out, with our um, blog posts that are really fun and engaging that aren't even written by me. So I have a whole nother perspective. Um, but yeah, make sure to connect with us over there. Bye.